Sorry y'all, my Sasquatch was talking. Anyways, welcome back to another news video, and in today's news video, I got quite a bit of stuff to talk about, but I do want to say something real quick. I just want to say I just got my first car in real life. It's taking me just now until I actually get my car to realize this, but you guys can do whatever you really set your mind to. And honestly, <laughs> I'm speechless. It's nothing crazy if you guys are wondering about my car. The model is a 2011 Chevy uh, Malibu, if you really will, so it's nothing crazy or anything like that, but still pretty comfortable for my first car. Anyways though, enough of this blabbering, and of course, if you guys want to continue supporting me, be sure to use my coding game. I really do appreciate it, and it does mean a lot, and since I'm going to have to start paying gas, it would it would really mean a lot. <laughs> Cut into the meat and bones right now. Rekrum released a new update yesterday or last night, and of course, let's read it out. As you guys know, with every single Rekrum update, they release patch notes, and I usually just read out the patch notes and stuff like that, so if you guys see anything cool that you see Rekrum added, be sure to let me know down inside the comments below. Hello. Anyways, we got this new patch, the Full Body Beta Buddies Edition, and we start off with this Rooms 2.0 section, saying legacy inventions will now be sorted into their own palette filters in Rooms 2, and lastly in this section, they fixed a bug where Rooms 2 Rooms might show a notification saying that players are editing the room when they load in, even if they are not, and slash or are not able to use the Maker Pen. Sorry if you weren't allowed to edit My Little Monsters after all. They then add this full body avatars improvements and bug fixes, and go on to say custom creators can now require players to auto switch to the floating bean avatars when wearing their costumes. Just configure your costume and turn off the allow full body avatar type setting, and previously created costumes will have this toggled off by default. Lastly, melee strikes and charge attacks for full body screen players weren't looking quite right with the fist, cutlass, frying pan, or pitchfork, push broom, swing handle, quest sword, whip, stool, and shovel. The animations, especially with how the opt hand was working, is looking much better. Then for general improvements and bug fixes, they say beta contents can now be saved into inventions. Inventions that contain chips or objects that are in beta can only be spawned in beta rooms and will not be publishable until they are resaved without any beta content. We are reorganizing your dance moves. Some players will find them in the gestures radial menu on the second tab while in third person, and you can get on your groove. And of course, get your groove on! I'm getting my groove on right now. They added a quick chat table and a quick chat table set enable chips in beta, added nev mash sample position chip in beta, release the following from beta which is the grabber component, and all of its chip, the player get roll off of distance and player set voice roll off distance, local player is VR, Recom object get root object, root object, root player, and that seems to pretty much be it. They then improved player voice quality in some rooms, so now your mic will be even crispier when you eat and they actually don't recommend you do that. All HUD chips are now called generic HUD element, additional UI optimization work, added a fix that prevents rare situations where player data may not load correctly, fixed dark overlay on the watch paid section headers, so that dark overlay was actually a bug, that's interesting. Then they fixed a bug that prevented sorting options from working as expected in palette search. And lastly, fixed an issue where improperly configured circuits audio constants would not log errors. They then also had experiments as well. They say experimenting with performance impact on a new feature that allows customization everywhere. And I actually got that split test. They're experimenting with room carousels, tags, and display room limits in the play menu. And lastly, they begin an experiment where some rooms will use more optimized network bandwidth model. Now pretty recently we had also gotten a Full Body Avatars developer blog, and Rekrum had this announcement saying Full Body Avatars Deep Dive. If you haven't already heard, the Full Body Avatar beta is now available for everyone, and to celebrate we wanted to share some of the nerdy details on how we made the Full Body Avatar work and a refresher on why we did it. Check it out on our hub now, and they have this little, you know, link to this developer blog. Now inside this blog, it says a look under the hoodie, a technical deep dive on Full Body Avatar. And as you guys can see, we have a Full Body concept, pretty cute, pretty cute. Then they go on to say why we decided to make full body avatars. Now I'm just going to say the bold for the sake of the video, but if you guys want to pause and read, feel free to pause and read. For their first reason why, they decided for more self-expression. For their second reason why, it was easier to understand what's going on in game. What? For their third reason, it's easier for creation. For their fourth reason, third person is better with full bodies. For their fifth reason, adding new features that they've wanted in their avatars. And for their last reason, they wanted to add more ways for all of us to make money. They also have a little note down here which says, this was the initial concept art we created as a target for what full body avatars could look like. We've made a lot of tweaks and improvements since then, but we feel like the original charm remains. 
and they also had a bunch of other blogs on the nerdy details of full body avatars. They have memory optimization, interaction improvements, and what's next. We'll start off with memory optimizations. Now starting off with memory optimizations, they say how we fit more limbs into the same amount of memory. They start off by saying they're fitting more limbs into the same amount of memory. While they were developing the full body avatar, they recognized that their crash rate due to memory of all of Rec Room, especially on mobile, has gotten really bad. Every developer at the company was tasked with making a memory optimization their top priority. One of the challenges that made it difficult to ship full body avatars within their original timeline is that we decided we needed to get to a place where the full body avatar with all of their extra limbs, animation systems, etc. had to use the same or less memory as a floating being. We call this getting to memory neutral. Here's when we started our optimization work. Our benchmark floating being avatar had about 6095 verticals, which define the geometry. It cost about 4 megabytes per avatar, which includes all three levels of detail meshes. The floating bean also had a total of 18 bones and 4 weights per vet vertex. They had a little note saying this is the benchmark avatar we used for comparison of our bean geometry, cost versus our full body cost. Full body avatar had about 11,000 verticals and cost about 8 megabytes per avatar before optimization. The full body skeleton had about 102 active bones with 4 bone weights per vertex. They needed to find a way to cut their full body avatar cost in half in order to hit their goal of being memory neutral, and they have three key innovations. They then also had another note saying with without choline and with choline. In the right image, you can see skin choline reduces the polygons under the clothes compared to the left image. This technique allows us to remove 1-2k to 2K verticals on the average. Now for their first memory optimization innovation, they had skin choline mask. This technique allows them to throw away some of those old expensive verticals in memory by not building parts of the avatar's skin that are not visible based on what they're wearing. It means that every clothing item they can select for a set of existing skin choline masks to inform the avatar system which skin faces are hidden and where an item is worn. Whenever you change what you're wearing, we look through the set of items you've equipped and determine which geometry faces can be discarded. This comes with the added benefit of avoiding clipping bugs just by removing the problematic underlying skin. You probably noticed during our beta when authoring our huge catalog of avatar items, some cooling masks weren't set properly and needed to be adjusted. While we fixed many neck and wrist caps, missing fingers and hands still have a lot of work to do, and we're continuing to clean this up. Then with their second innovation, they had mesh data and vertex data compression. They rewrote how the avatar mesh was built using a prim new primitive called the mesh data feature, and this dramatically sped up how their avatars are built and removed any annoying frame hitch that sometimes happen. You'll probably notice when a player joins the room, there could be a few frames of lag, especially on lower end devices like Quest 2. That's no longer the case with full body avatars. Another nice thing is that the mesh data feature had allowed them to compress their data per vertex so we can manipulate how much memory that bone weighs and UVs took up. With this, we saved about 30% of their total memory. They, then they had a note, of course, saying here's a code snapshot showing how we changed our vertex data layout to save memory by using half and byte ty data types instead of using floats and integers, cutting our unvarying data by 60%. Then for their last optimization, they said just in time level of detail. Now, now for their last innovation, they developed a technique they call Level of Detail. This basically builds all the three level of detail meshes whenever a new avatar appears and holds them all in the memory. We then only show one of these meshes at a time based on how far that player is from your camera, so that's why you see some players kind of polygoned from far away. Showing, then they have this little gif or note where they basically just show you know all the three different levels of details that they have, which is the polygon version, then it goes to a really detailed version. Because of the work they did above, they could explore a dynamic avatar that builds the avatar with the level of detail that should change with the, without experiencing those frame lags. So now we only have to pay the memory for what we display, which saved us another 40% of memory on average. This trades off some compute time for memory savings, but we found across all of our platforms, but that thanks to Unity's mesh data and multi-threaded jobs, it does not impact FPS. So in total, they were able to reduce the cost of full-body avatar around 60-70%, to 70 more than 50% that they needed. This is why we say that full-body avatar is more optimized than the floating beam. So memory problem solved, what about the frame rate? They found that all of the platforms could pretty smoothly handle the complexity of the extra limbs. When we did add some considerable computable expense is where we did add some considerable computable expense in the full body avatar, where we did add some considerable computable expense is in the full body avatar, inverse kinetic I IK solver, that's so confusing, we use. The full body IK helps with the believable movements of body, arms, and legs on screens and in VR while only tracking and animating your head and hands, while enough players in a room, lower end platforms started to show bad FPS. 
So instead of updating the I key solver for every player on every frame, they built a system to dynamically update player animations up to a certain amount per frame, prioritizing those avatar closest to the player or those who haven't been updated in a few frames. This technique ensures that you always get a good FPS but at the cost of some players' movements stuttering a bit, especially if they are far away from your camera. This feels like the right trade-off for us. Then for interaction improvements, how we show your hands while grabbing items. One of the biggest challenges for full body avatars coming up was the way to show you grabbing objects. With the floating bean, we got away with this by hiding your hand wherever you are holding something. But since one of our major goals was to make this easier for others to understand what you're doing, we knew we needed to find a good solution for making sure holding items looked good. Then they have this little gif showing the telekinesis effect where you can kind of grab items from pretty far away and it still look good and stuff like that. I can't really show it off in image form. Anyways, we tried a bunch of different approaches including snapping your virtual hand to spot on the grabbed item, but that felt like the game was physically pulling you around and rotating your hand. We decided that we should always honor where your hand is in the real space and have the grabbed objects come to them, so your virtual hands feels as close as possible to your real one. You can especially feel how this improves the stabilizing handles for laser weapons while in VR. We did find one exception to the rule that felt nice. Instead of allowing your avatar arms to stretch as long as they need to to match the location of your real hand, there's a point where if you held an item too far, your hand will look like it just let it go and the tool hovers where you are holding it in the real space. Kind of like you're controlling it with magical powers. We call it the telekinesis effect. Then they have this little note showing off the telekinesis effect and you know you guys can kind of see it, you know, leave your hand and it looks like you're just levitating it there. Then there's the usual gripping effect for many objects and we wanted the visual to look cohesive for rec room objects in order to give our artist control over how the hands are posed when grabbing the object. We created an internal tool called the hand grip placer and their artist can determine how objects should sit in the hand and what pose they should take. They continue to work through all the 500 plus items you can grab in Rec Room to make sure you got great looking grips. Then they have this note where this is an internal tool we wrote to give our grip artist a way to place and pose how the hand should grab each and one of our 500 plus items in the game. Then they improved movement and animation. Thanks to the work of Chode Animation, yeah, let's go, we love to see it. Anyways, they enhanced and added more life to their avatar animations. This includes improvements in walking, running, jumping, climbing, clambering, wall running, and sliding. Their goal was that Rec Room feels more immersive and expressive, and these improved animations do a lot to ground the avatars in the reality of the game's space. And of course, they are still working on polishing all of the animations in the game as part of their beta work. And they have this little note saying bean slide compared to the full body avatar slide. And I gotta say, I really like the full body avatar slide. Wait, wait, I know I paused the video, but turning into a Sigma. And the only way to save me is to join my channel membership. Yes, that's right. I have a channel membership inside my YouTube channel and it's just like a Patreon. Basically, people give me a set rate amount of money for a specific amount of perks. And if you guys are Calamari through Octopus, well, you guys can shout it out in all my videos. So, massive shout out to all these folks who include Ghastly, Garlic Bread, Coley, It's Freddy RR, Jack Tutorial, Now the Pub, Dozer Blade, Cat, BBB, Burning Owl, Bucket Guy, Yo, it's Jakey, Raphael, Cloud, Netflix69, and Box David. Thanks for the love and support. And of course, let's get back into the video. Now, lastly, for what's next. Full Body Avatars is still in beta, so what are we working on to get it out of beta? They're continuously iterating their Full Body Avatars so that every player can use them. They're continuing to work on how full body avatar moves in VR and screens, especially with dancing and idle animations, fixing all avatars to work with full body, and making it so the creator can determine which avatar types are used in their costumes, fixing the ability to just how a hat sit on your head, fixing more screen-based animations. Of course, have you noticed how full body avatars drink water bottles through their eye? And finishing up all the grip poses for the items. And lastly, I know I'm saying and a lot, exposing the underlying sliders that shape your body and head so you can have more control in customizing your form. And they have this little cute gif of what I think is Gribbly just drinking some water through his eye. It's kind of cool. They're continuing to polish some of their legacy avatar items that don't look great yet on full body avatars, and we know some of the gloves aren't where they like them yet. So finally, we haven't forgotten about full body tracking and finger tracking for their VR players. Only when this list of things are done and we address additional feedback we receive, we will consider dropping the beta status. Their commitment to floating bean avatars. Of course, they know a lot of us are concerned about the way we deprecate the full floating bean avatar when we determine full body avatars are ready to be out of beta. Don't worry, we are committed to supporting and upgrading floating beans that have been here since the beginning of Rec Room. One of their biggest tasks right now is to take the optimizations you read about above, such as skin cooling mask and just-in-time level of detail, and bring them to the beans so we can reduce their cost by 60%. This will help 
be a big help in our fight to improve performance on all platforms. Additionally, we plan to bring over some new features to the Bean, like being able to see your customized hands when grabbing objects, being able to see your torso when you look down, and the option to have a nose, that is the option to have eyebrows, and the option for eye gleam, wherever you want to preserve your classic Bean as is. Selectively, add some of the improvements such as eye gleam or eyebrows, or move all the way to a full body avatar, we will fully support you. Look for an upcoming dev blog where we dive deeper into our plans about preserving and enhancing the floating Bean avatars. And with upgraded Bean avatars coming soon, your glove customization will stay visible when holding items like the laser pistol. We'll also have an option to hide your hand if that's the interaction you prefer. And so that's our entire full body avatar blog, a lot of cool news and stuff like that, and be sure to let me know your guys' thoughts down in the comments below. Anyways, I was talking to this guy who's a supporter, and of course, massive shout out to Boss, we love to see it, and he's just like, you know, chilling. He's a level 49, he's kinda got some basic clothes on, and of course, go say hi if you guys really want to. Like the channel, subscribe to the video, and of course, if you guys wanna see more record news content, well, you guys can probably check out my other videos, you know, on that side of the screen. Anyways though, that's pretty much it, and of course, Ah! <laughs>